Factoring trinomials, day two notes. We are looking today at the same type of trinomials we were looking at yesterday. Uh, today, a couple of things might kind of happen in these examples that I just really wanted to talk about and get a little bit more practice. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start here with example number one. And let's try and recall that if we wanna be factoring, right, we wanna be factoring, then when we're finished, our answer is gonna have two groups of parentheses most likely, right? Like this is the form that we're used to seeing when we're finished, which means that we need to get the two groups kind of up here, but there's only three terms. So when we're factoring by grouping, we need a fourth term. Where does it come from, right? How do we get it? And that's kind of where we have to make sure that we don't get stuck. What we have to do is we have to remember that I need to break up this negative 20x. I'm going to figure out how I can break up the negative 20x. The 4x squared stays. The 25 at the end stays. But we have to figure out what am I going to use here in the middle instead of writing minus 20x. Okay, so to do that, you might recall from yesterday that we look for two numbers that multiplied together equal AC and added together equal B. So let's talk about that. So what is A times C in this case? Okay, well in this case that's gonna be four times 25, which is 100. All right, and B is the number in the middle, so just negative 20. So I need to find two numbers that multiply to 100, but add up to negative 20. All right, well, we always can start, we always should start, in fact, by making a list. And make a list of the number of factors, uh, which means we're looking at the 100, right? The number we multiplied to get. So I'm gonna look at 100, I'm gonna make a list of all the factors for 100. Now that seems like it would take a while, but it really doesn't, and I promise you, it will help you so much if you make this list. Start with a one. One times 100 is 100. Two times 50. Three times, let's see here, does three work? If you wanna know if the number works, if it can be divided by three, just try it. If you get a decimal, don't use it, so we're not using three. Four works, right? Think of quarters, four times 25, five works, five times 20. Six doesn't work. Again, if you weren't sure, you can do 100. Divided by six, you don't want decimals, so you wouldn't use six. Seven doesn't work, eight doesn't work, nine doesn't work, 10 works, 10 times 10. Anytime you get a number repeating, you know your list is finished. So I have five factor pairs that could possibly work. Now, I want the factor pair that when I add, gives me a negative 20. So how do I multiply and get a positive, but add and get a negative? All right, you have to use both numbers, make them both negative, right? Because a negative times a negative will give me a positive when I multiply, but when I add, it will stay negative. So which of these pairs will add up to a negative 20? Hopefully we can see that it's this last one. All right, so all this work was to figure out how we can get that fourth term that we need, and we're gonna do that by writing a negative 10x and a negative 10x. All right, these numbers right here that I just found go into my trinomial. Now I have four terms instead of three terms, and now I can do what we learned how to do last week. So we're gonna start by making two groups, right? I don't need that other work anymore. I'm gonna start by making two groups. So I'm gonna do 4x squared minus 10x, and I'm gonna do negative 10x plus 25, okay? So what I wanna do now is I wanna just look for the GCF in each little group. So the GCF for this group, let's see, four and 10 can both be divided by two, and they both have x, so two x. So we're gonna have a two x here in both, so two x goes on the outside, and let's figure out what's left inside. Well, it's four divided by two is just two, and x squared divided by x is x. Always check, by the way, 2x times 2x is going to give me back that 4x squared, so I know I'm right. All right, here the x's cancel out, and I still have minus 5. So there's my first group. Let's look at my next group. What is my GCF here? Well, they got 10 and 25. They can both be divided by 5, but remember, if that front term is negative, we've got to use a negative for in our GCF, so that's going to be a negative 5. So divide everything by negative 5, 
right? That goes on the outside of the parentheses. And let's figure out what's left over. So negative 10 divided by negative 5 is positive 2x. 25 divided by negative 5 is negative 5. All right, don't forget, these numbers in the parentheses should be matching. It's a great way to kind of check your progress. If they don't match, you messed up, find your mistake. So one of my groups is 2x minus 5, right? The stuff that was already matching, that's one of my groups. My other group comes from my GCFs, my outside terms. And those are going to be 2x and a negative 5. Now normally we would box this up and call it a day, but in this case I want you guys to notice something. Okay, while this answer is correct, we can also write this, right? We can also write this as 2x minus 5 squared. Right, so this is correct, 2x minus 5 times 2x minus 5, but please also know that I can write that as 2x minus 5 squared, right? Because it's something times itself, right? That is the same as squaring it. So let's check my answer here real quick. And y equals, do you see how I already typed this problem in? All right, I've got 4x squared minus 20x plus 25. I've got that in y1. So in y2, let's type in what I think the answer is, which is 2x minus 5 squared. All right, I'm going to go to my table. And since my y1s and my y2s are matching, I know I did this problem correctly and I can move on. All right, so that is example one. Let's go ahead and let's look at example two. Divide this here for us. All right, so let's look at example number two. Here we go. All right, this one seems a little bit simpler. At least my numbers are smaller. So let's take a quick look. Now we need four terms, which I need you guys to remember means that I need to break up this middle term. All right, we're going to keep everything on the outsides. Like I'm going to keep the x squared and I'm going to keep the minus 6, but we're going to break up the 5x in the middle, the negative 5x. Now how do we do that? How do we figure out exactly how to rewrite the negative 5x? We first look at a times c, and in this case that's 1 times negative 6 which is just negative 6. All right, the two numbers we choose need to multiply to this. All right, then we look at b, the other number we haven't looked at yet, which in this case is negative 5, and they need to add up to negative 5. So what two numbers do this for us? You might think you know, but I would really, really, really strongly recommend that you guys go ahead and make a list for that negative 6. There's not very many ways to multiply and get 6. We have 1 times 6, or we have 2 times 3. Now, because I need to multiply and get a negative, in my factor pairs, one of the numbers must be negative. So does negative 1 and 6 work? Well, if I add these up, I would get a positive 5. I don't want positive 5. All right, how about a negative 2 and a 3? Does that work? No, if I add these up, I'll get positive 1. It's not what I want. Remember, I want a negative 5. So let me keep trying the other side here. 1 and a negative 6. Does that work? Yeah, that works, right? Because 1 plus negative 6 is negative 5. That's my factor pair. And so that's what i got to use in my trinomial. A positive 1x and a negative 6x. All right, once you get this far, make your two groups. Here we go. We're going to start with x squared plus 1x and then we've got a negative 6x minus 6. My GCF in this first group is, well, all they have in common is x or 1x. If you want to write the, the 1, you can, but you don't have to. So let's see what's left over here. x squared divided by x is just x. Here my x's cancel, so I have plus 1. Let's look over here on the right. We're going to figure out the GCF is 6. Wait a second. Negative in the front means i got to use a negative over here, so negative 6. Let's divide it out, and let's see what I have left over. All right, the negative 6's cancel here, so I just have x, and a negative 6 divided by a negative 6 is a positive 1. All right, perfect. I've got my x plus 1's matching, All right? My red groups are matching, so that's one of my groups. My other group comes from my GCF numbers on the outside, which in this case are an x and a minus 6. So my final answer in this case is x minus 6 and x plus 1. Again, double check. It's real quick. Type this into your y equals. Alright, so we've got x squared 
minus 5x minus 6. And then on the next group, type in what you think the answer is, right? This x minus 6 and x plus 1, and do them both on the same line. So we got x minus 6, and we have x plus 1. And check your table. And we know that they're correct. We know they're equivalent because they're both producing the same y values when the x values get input. All right, we got one more example to work through. Here we go. Example number three. Okay, let's look at example number three. Um, in example number three, I want you guys to take a quick look at it. And do you notice anything a little bit different? Maybe you do, maybe you don't. You know what, let's just go ahead and let's move on. All right, let's do what we normally do. Let's remember that we have to break up this middle term. We definitely want to keep the outside terms the same, so the 4x squared and the positive 24. But how do we break up that middle term? Hmm. All right, that's where we make our list. So we're going to do a times c. Okay, what's a times c? Well, 4 times 24. Let's see, 4 times 24. And that is going to give me 96. All right, so I need two numbers that multiply to this, but add up to B. What is B? B is 22. Now, I don't know all the factors for 96. So that's, in this case, a list is really going to help me. So I know 1 and 96. I know 2 and, let's see here, 48. I know 3 and something. I, let's see here, 96 divided by 3. Is it 32? Yeah, 3 and 32. 4 times 24. Right, that's how we got here in the first place. 5 doesn't work. Does 6 work? I don't know. Let's try. Nine, oops. 96 divided by 6 is 16. So 6 worked. 6 and 16. 7 doesn't work. 8 does work. I think 8 times 12 is 96, right? 8 times 12. Uh, 9 and 96. I don't don't know if that works. Right, we're just checking. 96 divided by 9. Nope, that didn't work. All right, so 10 doesn't work, 11 doesn't work, 12 works, but I already have it, so that's my list, right? That's it, I'm done. So which of these will add up to 22? Mm, well, I've got all my signs are positive, so I really should just be adding here. Looks like this one, 6 and 16. All right, so a positive 6x and a positive 16x. All right, 6 plus 16 is 22, so I know I chose the right numbers. And that list was a little bit longer, but, you know, using your calculator makes it pretty simple to find those numbers. Here we go. we got to make our two groups. So I've got 4x squared, and I've got a positive 6x, and I've got 16x and a positive 24. So let's go ahead and let's check my GCF in this first one. Let's see, GCF in this first one is going to be 2x, right? They can both be divided by 2x. So that goes outside. My numbers that get left over are going to be another 2x plus 3. Okay. On the next group, let's see, my GCF is going to be 16, 24, let's see, 4 works, 6 doesn't work. So 8. My GCF here is going to be 8. So I'm going to have 8 on the outside. And left inside, I'm going to have, let's see here, 2x plus 3. Okay, so I'm feeling good because I've got 2x plus 3. And they're both matching, so that's one of my groups. My other group comes from my outside terms, just like the last two problems. And I've got 2x plus 8. I want you guys to look at this answer, and I need you to realize that you are not done. Any guesses as to why this time you're not done? Alright, the reason is, is I've got a 2 and I've got an 8. I still have a GCF in there. Alright, you're not done because you still have a GCF. All right, you still have a GCF, which means we still have to take it out. What is the GCF for this group? 
the GCF for 2x plus 8 is just a 2, but that means that we do have to take out the 2. So the 2 is going to go in the front, and then I would just have x plus 4, and then I would have 2x plus 3. There we go. Now I don't have any GCFs left, so I'm finished. All right, by the way, you could have done this first, right? You could see 4x squared plus 22x plus 24. You could say, okay, well, I know all of those numbers have a GCF. Usually they don't, but this time they all have a GCF of 2. Of two. So if we took the 2 out at first, we would have 2x squared plus 11x plus 12, and we would still end up with 2 with an x plus 4 and a 2x plus 3. So it doesn't really matter if you do it at the beginning or at the end, as long as you catch it, all right, as long as you catch it. So we actually had a GCF that just goes right in the front for this one, so that one is a little bit strange. Again, just watch out for those problems, all right, because they don't happen every time, but it is a possibility. Uh, we can, uh, while I type this in, you guys, just uh, to check my answer, just kind of listen real quick. So if you were taking a test, you might have both of these as answer choices. All right, and technically, like think about the fact that I'm checking my answer right now. Both of these would show up correct in my table. And you'd have to then figure out, okay, well, if both of them work, then what's the right answer? Think about that for a second. If both of them are producing the same values in the table, but one of them is right and one of them is wrong, how would you figure it out? Okay, well, I hope that you figure it out by remembering that factoring, like you're not done factoring until everything's been factored. Factored means you take out all the common factors. So this, even though this is technically not incorrect, it's not all the way factored, so you're not done. All right, this would be the correct answer. This one we would say is not correct if your instruction said to simplify completely or to factor completely. All right, so I'm checking my table here, and whoop, we're good to go. All right, checked my answer. So here are your three examples for today. Again, you guys, just be prepared. This stuff just takes practice. You just have to practice it, and you will get the process down, um, and we will see this kind of throughout the year as we go.